Hello ladies and gentlemen, how are you doing today? I hope you're doing good. I'm glad for this opportunity and this privilege to be here again. And may the Lord bless you as well as he has also given you that opportunity, the chance also to be able to see uh, this video. May God bless you in Jesus name. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you. We, we bless you. We glorify your name and we say thank you for your loving kindness toward us. We say thank you in the name of Jesus. We pray even as we listen to your word, you speak to us and give us the grace to understand and do your will. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you, sirs and mess. God bless you so much. How is your family doing? I hope everyone is good. I hope everyone is safe. May God continue to keep us all safe. Uh, may God continue to keep us all safe by his grace. May God continue to keep you and your family safe by his grace. In the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. God bless you so much. Today we're talking about the message titled The Purpose of God. Part 2. The Purpose of God. Uh, the Purpose of God. Um, as we saw in part 1, the first uh, message, uh, we referenced um, uh, talking about our Lord Jesus Christ in Matthew chapter 27 from verse 1 to 3. Um, how Satan steered up. Uh, how Judas Iscariot betrayed the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, we're going to talk more about it. Let's go into today's um, part two and see more about the details of God, about the details about the purpose of God for our life. God has good intention. No matter what the challenges, no matter what the situation is, God always have a good intention. He says in the book of Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11, he says, my thought towards you, I know the thoughts I have towards you, they are of peace and, and, and not of evil, they are of good and not of evil. I have good expectation for you to have good future, for you to have a fulfilled life, for you to have a fulfilled and accomplished destiny. Those are my thoughts towards you. So no matter what you're facing right now, God has a good purpose for it. Let's read more. Let's see example. Let's see illustrations. Let's see. Let's see how the Lord has dealt with people, and and despite how the challenges it at the first appearance, let's see the conclusion of the matter, and you will be able to understand that God loves you. He cares about you, regardless of your present situation or circumstances. God cares about you. Now we're going to st let's take a look at the life of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These young, young guys, youths, they were accused, they were reported to the king, and they had to be thrown into the fire. You are going to be wondering that why should God allow his children to be thrown into the fire? As you also ask questions about your challenges and situation, why should I have to go through this? Why do I have to face this? This is too much for me. And about Daniel thrown into the lions, and you're gonna why should God allow this? This is a good man. It, Daniel that denied himself even when the king was providing that they provided good food and wine for them. Daniel decided, no, I don't want this. And this good Daniel that stood for the Lord, for Jehovah, is going to be thrown. This Daniel that was praying to God, that was praying to Jehovah, and people accused him. This same Daniel was going to be thrown into the lion's den. And you be, we as human beings, people tend to be like, why? Why, do, why should I deserve this? But God as a purpose. Let's, let's, let's take our Bible with him before we continue. May God bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. So we're going to take a Bible with him from the book of Daniel chapter 3 from verse 8 to 30. From verse 8 to 30. Those, that is the, like the, the whole story. But because of our time, we're not going to be able to read everything right now. But I will encourage you after listening to this message, please read um, um, the whole verse and you understand more by the grace of God. So Daniel chapter 3 from verse 11, like we started, this is the story of the Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. And yes, okay, from verse 8. 
Therefore, at the time, certain Chaldeans came forward and accused the Jews and spoke and said to King Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. These people, they came to accuse this young boy, these young guys, this youth, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And now they are coming to, to present themselves to be good people before the king. Oh, king, live forever. You know, there are some people, there are some people that are so wicked today. They like, when they, they, are want, they want to report you, they want to say bad things about you. And to the person they are trying to report you to, they begin to present themselves good and nice, honor the person, ill the king, this and that. And that is what these people are doing now. Oh, King Lee forever. And they now reported these young guys. We're going to skip and go. Like I said, please read the whole entire. We're going to skip to verse 19. Now, after they have reported to the king, the king is so annoyed now. Verse 19. Then Nebuchadnezzar was full of fury. And the expression on his face changed toward Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He spoke and commanded that they eat the furnace seven times more that that more than it was usually eaten. So before this verse 19, now um, the the king have called those guys to himself and and confronted them. I heard that you you guys are not bound down for the gods for the image which I made, which I requested and demand commanded everyone to bow down to. Is it true that you did not obey my commandment, my instruction, my, my requests? And they said yes, they confirmed. Now the king was so annoyed. Now they wanted to turn into the fire. We're going to skip again now to verse 26. Then Nebuchadnezzar went near the mouth of the burning fury furnace and spoke, saying, Should you mention Abednego, servants of the most I go, come out and come here. Then Should you mention Abednego came from the midst of the fire. So these children of God were thrown into the fire eventually. But miracle happened. The Lord, the Savior, the Messiah. Jesus appeared to be among them. You know, if they were not thrown into the fire, and that is something about our situation challenges now, Jesus wouldn't have appeared. One, the king wouldn't have seen this miracle confess Jesus Christ the Son of God with those people it would never be heard that people were thrown into the fire and those who even threw them died but those who were thrown did not die and they were even walking within the fire The children of Israel, if they have not gone through the Red Sea, as the Bible made us to understand that there was a shorter route to get to the land of Canaan, but God decided to take them to the Red Sea. If they have not gone through the Red Sea, we wouldn't have heard that God is able to even perform such miracle, making way through the Red Sea. Your situation right now. God is about to do something great, something miracle, something exceeding women understanding which will never be heard, which will never be known, which God is about to give a testimony which you would have never have if you are not in this situation right now. That is God's purpose. Let's read more before we continue. So, these people came out and verse 28, Nebuchadnezzar spoke saying, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who sent his angel and delivered his servants, who trusted in, in him, who trusted in him, and have, they have frustrated the king's word and yielded their bodies that they should not serve nor no worship any god 
except their own God. These guys, these young children, stood for Jehovah despite their challenges, confronted to be thrown into the fire. They stood with Jehovah. They stand for God. And verse 30 says, Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. One of the plans, one of the things God is trying to bring out in every situation, every challenges of, of man, is that at the end, God want to elevate such person. God want to lift you up. God want to honor you as well. As he glorifies himself. As he honor his name even to your own challenges. Jesus Christ now, as we reverence in, 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 the, in the part one, the, the purpose of God, the first message, on in Matthew chapter 27 verse 1 and 2, 3, that, like, that he was betrayed, he was killed. He was betrayed. And now, even when Jesus was even talking about his death, and Peter was like, no, you are not going to die. No. And Jesus was like, no, no, I will book you. This is my mission. This is my purpose. It's my plan. I'm supposed to die for, the, it, it, it's part of my mission. I'm supposed to go through that pain and suffering and eventually die. As we saw in the, in the message, uh, if Christ had to suffer again, what? If Christ had to suffer again. So, Peter showed emotion to care for, for, for the Lord Jesus Christ. And what we're trying to bring out about this is that if it were to be Peter and he knew that ah, I'm going to suffer and I'm eventually going to die, Peter is going to run away. And that is Peter when he hasn't gotten the Holy Spirit. But in Acts chapter 2, the Bible made us to understand that Peter, this same Peter, that was trying to stop Jesus from dying which means that if he were to be the one he would have run for his life he wouldn't end he wouldn't even wait this same Peter by the time the Holy Spirit came upon him this same Peter could stand and speak for Jesus speak talk about Jesus proclaim the gospel of Christ regardless of whatever challenge might rise up from that Peter stood for Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit may the Lord bless you in the name of Jesus Christ God's purpose for his children God, God's purpose for his children is not to suffer as we term it to be suffering the Bible says in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9, it says, God is not slack concerning his promises as men count slackness, which means that the way we view things is not the way God views things. We might be saying, oh, this challenges the situation that oh, this person is going through is suffering. Ah, this this is this is ridiculous, this is painful, this is this is suffering. But God did not see it as suffering. God sees it as test. You might, when you hear about the story of Job, you might be like, this is, this is, this is eye pain. To be, to be rated. But God does not see it like that. Because He has a great purpose for us. He loves us. He loves us so much. When your child, as a young child, when that child want to like feel reluctant to learn, to study, and you you you're trying to encourage, even to the extent you have to force this child, go and learn, go and study. And this child just want to feel reluctant, want to just keep playing and just avoid school and avoid reading. 
But you know the plan. To that child, it might feel like, oh, this is painful. This is this is this is not this is not good. This is not acceptable. This is this is this is ah, this is suffering. As we are gonna play, tame it. But you love this child. You know that when this child goes to school, study, the, 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 this child is going to have a better future. This child is, is going to most especially, like now you, you're going to be, you are going to have some qualities that you could be able to communicate with other, with other people around the world. Just because you have education. So likewise, God loves us so much, He cares about us, so therefore we need to be patient with God. Regardless of whatever situation we're going through, we need to have patience with God. We need to relax and just, we need to just seek God's faith that the Lord should give us the grace to go through it successfully. That the Lord should help us and carry us through the time of that challenge, that situation, and remain faithful to God. Like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Like Daniel. Like Jesus, that even if you are aware of what you're about to face, you shouldn't run. Like Peter, we, we, we'd have, we, we, we would have assumed that he's going to do, because based on his care and emotion for Jesus, if he were to be the one at that time, Peter's going to run. So don't let us run away from God's test towards us. Yes, it's a test that God wants us to, to take seat for and make sure we pass it. He want to perform his wonders. He want to show forth his glory like he did to the life of the children of Israel. Let's be patient with God. Let's see God's face and help so that he's going to see us through the situation perfectly. Which means that according to his divine purpose, and may the Lord bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. What does this word purple stand for? What does it stand for? So we have P to be plans. We have P to be planned. God has a plan. It's, and, and this plan, we can tell it to be priorities laid according to necessities. Priority laid according to necessities. God has plan. You he understand the situation. Understand. God understand the whole situation. From the start to the end, he understand the whole situation. Our result. God have a good God has planned a good result for your situation. Your challenges you're going to right now, God has already planned a good result for it. Just stick, just remain patient with him. Let him walk you through. And eventually he's gonna bring out the result for you. You're going to see it yourself. And another P is perform. God want to perform. He want to use your challenges to perform his wonders. Like the children of Israel, as we, we spoke earlier. God want to use your challenges, your situation, to perform his wonders. Um, as to us from chapter 7, when um, Moses had to like, oh, turn the water to blood, the, the, the plague came. God want to use his challenges to perform wonders, to honor himself. Oh, his obedience, you need to remain obedient and faithful to God, even in your situation. Stand for God, like the children of, like the children of Meshach Abednego, Daniel chapter 3. Stand faithful for God, stand for God, stand by Jehovah, and he's going to see you through. As a standard, God has set a standard for your test. So you need to be patient with him so that's going to lead you through. He has set a standard. There is a standard. There is, it's, it's like when you're taking an exam, you're taking a test. There is a set mark, a pass mark. He has set a standard for it. So you need, he, he can only walk you through. So walk with God. Let him carry you through. Let him guide you to remain obedient and faithful to him. And finally, letter E for purpose, it says elevate. God want to lift you high at the end of your situation. So rejoice because God has a purpose for your challenges. Rejoice for God has a purpose for your challenges. First Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 16 to 18. It says rejoice. Pray always without ceasing. 
rejoice for for this is for this is God's purpose for you God expectations for you in Christ Jesus rejoice always rejoice 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 that Daniel chapter chapter 3 again verse 30 um, um, it says then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of the Babylon. God want to elevate you at the end of your situation. He want to lift you high. He want to bless you. He want to promote you. Like the story of Job, Job chapter 42 verse 12, the Bible says, God, it says, bless Job even more than, the, more, Job had more than before. More than what he had at the beginning. Twice as much. So God want to elevate you. God want to promote you. So remain patient with God. Remain patient with God. John chapter 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 sixteen verse thirty three. He says, Jesus told his disciples, Rejoice! I have overcome the world. From Mark chapter actually Mark first Mark chapter ten verse twenty nine and, and and thirty. He says that in this world you gonna okay verse 29 30 it says you have left those who have left wife mother father children houses land i'm gonna give you more you're gonna have for my sake you those who have left those things for my sake i'm i'm gonna you you're gonna have house you're gonna have money you're gonna you're gonna have a lot of things including persecution and that is the point including persecution and have eternal life but in John chapter 16 verse 33 it says there's going to be trouble in this world you're going to face challenges but rejoice I have overcome the world the purpose of God be patient with God he has the plan he understands the situation he has a result already planned schedule for it he want to promote you. He want to perform his. He want to perform his. Perform his miracle, rider. He want to perform. Be obedient, and remain faithful with God. God has a standard for your challenges. So let be pay, walk with Him. Pray. Tell Him to give you the grace so that He will and help you through the situation, challenges successfully, because He has set a standard for it. And likewise. E, God want to elevate you. May the Lord bless you in the name of Jesus. And may the Lord see us through all our challenges and fulfill His divine purpose in our lives in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The purpose of God. God has a thought towards you. His thoughts. Jeremiah 29. I have a thought for you. My thought towards you are of good and not of evil. May the Lord bless you and may the Lord keep you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Wait on the Lord. Isaiah chapter 40. Wait. Those who wait on the Lord. They shall renew their strength. They shall fly like eagles. And they shall not be weary. Wait on the Lord. Pray as you face your challenges. That the Lord should guide you. Help you too successfully. And may the Lord glorify himself. Perform his wonders. Honor himself. In your challenges. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Do you want God to be honored in your life? Remain patient with God. And God will also be honored. As he honored himself in the life of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. God will also honor himself in your life. May the Lord bless you. Thank you for your time. And likewise your attention. The purpose of God. It is of good. No matter what it is. No matter the challenges. The purpose of God is always good. God bless you. And God be with you. Thank you. Amen.